was unusual. Like I was, uh, like when I came there, I literally had no idea what what I would be getting into. Uh, I was a pretty strong player, probably stronger than I am now, maybe quite a bit stronger practically, but from uh, the point of view of working on openings, of seconding somebody, of uh, working in a team like this, all this was completely new for me, so I had to learn on the fly. And um, and yeah, I have a lot of uh, a lot of nice memories, and I also think that most of these memories are also vivid. Of course, in some ways, like all the days, they merge into one. Yeah. But yet, uh, the experiences themselves, they they remain vivid for me. Like even small things, like you know what we, um, like even like snacks that we had during yeah. during work, and and uh, movies we watched in between, in between, and what we discussed, and things we spoke about, and even the music that was played. I mean, these things I somehow find difficult to forget, so all this is still very vivid for me. Right. Um, nowadays you work for uh, Caruana, for Fabi. Um, can you tell us a bit on how working for him is different than working for Fishy, also considering, of course, they're different uh, characters, but also considering that technology has changed? I think technology changed less um, uh, than you would think. Um, that is like we worked a lot with computers and we still do yeah. uh, whatever we did without computers we still try to do um, I think the more uh, of a difference is that when I started working for Vichy Vichy definitely was a fully grown adult uh, older than me by, by a bit and uh, not a man that you have to to help to get organized and disciplined in work it was more the other way around. As in, definitely the first few weeks I was learning from Vichy how to work, not the other way around. Yeah. And with Fabi, when we started to work, um, Fabi was clearly a player of a comparable level, uh, but not yet of comparable work ethic, ethic and discipline. And uh, uh, there, probably beyond, uh, beyond any doubt, uh, Fabi had to learn from me yeah. some things about how to work and uh, how to, you know, how much time and energy to invest and how much intensity to put into this position or that. So the dynamic is, I think, quite different. Yes. Yeah. One of the key themes in the book is that uh, Team uh, Anand, including yourself, worked insane hours. Has that changed nowadays? Uh, when I talk, for example, to uh, Jan Gustafsson, he said that in, in Team Magnus, uh, it feels more relaxed than what he read in the book. From what I have heard, uh, it feels more relaxed for everyone in yeah. every team. Every team. Every team. Like uh, also Topalov seconds have spoken to me. Yeah. And um, um, I have also worked with other players in between. Yeah, like Karyakin, for example. Like Karyakin during the candidates in 2014, for instance. Although, like with Karyakin, um, so I, since I was like the only second present there, um, I, I put in as many hours as I could. Yeah. But there are limits to how much you can do alone, right? Yeah. After all, um, you know, a man got asleep. Yeah. And um, uh, and from what I um, from what I feel these days, like by the general experience, and also from what I heard from Vishik himself later, and uh, maybe it's not not exactly the the best approach. Like, of course, you get a lot of stuff covered, you show a lot of dedication, but you also do um, run your seconds into an early grave like this, right? Yeah. So... Diminishing returns. And you get diminishing returns, yeah? You get uh, diminishing quality of analysis also, and maybe diminishing, like, spark of inspiration, yeah. possibly. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, although probably Vichy would be better reference for this, uh, in his later matches, the ones without me, he had also, to quite some extent, abandoned this policy uh, of like insane hours also for himself. Um, especially since you know, when you play Magnus, uh, you don't have the feeling that you will get a very long line that you need to to have checked to every detail. And. Um, and yeah, I mean now I, I mean I work, I still work very hard, but uh, nowadays I do not sit until six in the morning, you know, and then wake up at nine. I don't do this um, 
I actually try to, to get some sleep and then I wake up a bit earlier so it's a kind of different routine you know? yeah yeah um, with uh, Fabi, when you played for the when he played for the World Championship, you also had a team. Um... We had a team, but it was um, a bit different because, like, we had two people present on site yeah. and two people uh, working um, all the time, but they were not there. Yeah, so yeah. they were uh, they different were in, time zone. Yeah, different time zone, which which works. Yeah. Uh, I thought this was like exactly the point uh, because so we second in America, the time difference works for you. Because when you, for instance, are done for the night, they still have the day, so they can work normal hours. Yeah. Uh, but of course, we still like put in a lot of hours and got uh, reasonably little sleep. Uh, of course, it's yeah. a world championship match. Yeah, what you're gonna do? Yeah. Um, obviously, 98% uh, or something of the preparation is focused on openings. But were there also things that you took from Fiji that you could use for Fabi in terms of how to deal with stress, how to deal with pressure? Yeah, I, this is so individual for everyone. Yeah. So individual for everyone. And um, and uh, I like what uh, probably any psychologist will tell you, but I, what, I, what I had to discover for myself is uh, very often when you try to help people deal with pressure, it just makes them more stressed, yeah? <laughs> it's like, like telling them to relax, yeah? <laughs> like, I am relaxed. Yeah? Relax like, now. Yeah, relax <laughs> now, yeah? No, but of course, I mean, I, I try to help where I can. Yeah. And... Um, um, but uh, of course you have to remember that in our field there are no like golden rules yeah there are no hundred percent rules what works for some doesn't work for others and uh, um, of course you go like by common sense yeah some things you think are obvious like you know good nutrition is better than bad nutrition good sleep is better than yeah. than bad sleep and like some exercise is better than no exercise but to actually implementing steps uh, is very individual and very difficult very often yes. yeah and finding the right balance finding yeah. the balance and and all this is interesting like with Vichy um, like a lot of these things you would never have to do because uh, somehow Vichy he was good at this always at uh, maintaining himself yeah. with Vichy you don't really tell him you know eat something or, or go sleep or I mean he knows how to take care of himself better than anyone yeah. Vichy he had this yeah he um, also, he, also, he had the learnings from the Kasparov match that may have helped a lot. Also, Vichy always had this infinite support from uh, from Aruna, yeah. who really knew him well from this incessant traveling. Yeah. And of course, Fabi also gets uh, all the support uh, from his parents. Yeah. Uh, but his parents do not often travel with him these days, yeah? so it's a bit different. But but still, like Fabi still has a, a big team, a big wave of support. Behind him, or, but you just you, you cannot just start comparing these people. They're just two different individually. Yeah, let's talk a bit uh, 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 about yourself. Uh, you were a top player. You won the FIDE Knockout World Championship. Then uh, you've risen uh, as one of the top trainers in the world with first Fishy and and now Fabi. How do you feel that those kind of things interact? Are you still active as a player? I see you play sometimes Bundesliga, but do you feel your level is impacted by all your training activities? It definitely doesn't help. Yeah. It definitely doesn't help. Um, quite uh, a big part of uh, of the playing level. Yeah. As I had to discover, although you would think it's obvious, but I somehow had to discover it the hard way. Um, quite a big part of it is is training. Yeah. It's not. There is no such thing as level. Yeah? There is no such thing as you know one guy is stronger than the other. You have to, whatever level you have, you have to keep it maintained, you have to train it, you have to polish it. And it's a bit like um, like one runner can be faster than the other by half a second or by millisecond or by one hundredth of a second. But if the runner hasn't run for a year, then he would not be able to run, right? Yeah. So it is, um, it is a part of it. And as a coach, you lose quite a bit of the practical strength. Yeah. Practical strength, it just comes from training yeah. and playing and yeah. for instance for me the last tournament I played was uh, was Isle of Man yeah. and the next tournament I will play might be another half a year from now so you so missed the routine I missed the routine in such a way that whenever I sit down to play it feels a bit foreign feels difficult and despite the fact that like my openings are now better my general understanding is probably better than it used to be uh, but all these things they are not the practical strength practical strength co contains Ability to make decisions, ability to um, to adjust, all these things that 
that need constant practice. Yeah. So in a way, yeah, I am missing all of that. Yes. Okay. Is it also impacting one other thing that I was wondering? In, in Team Fishy, I think when you were there, uh, especially in the beginning, Peter Heine was the big man. He was always traveling with Fishy and also in... in like literally big man. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But nowadays, I think you are that for Fabi. Yeah? You're the main person. When you start preparing for a, a match or candidate tournament, direction setting is maybe even more important before you start actually the work. How do you do that? How do you start direction setting in terms of what type of openings? Is that discussions you have with Fabi? And do you still need your own playing strength to be used for that, to see where are the new developments? Yeah, I mean, very often, um, it. I mean, some directions, they come from um, me having some ideas in some lines. Yep. Uh, so very often, um, uh, the way it works is, okay, it's also logical, yeah? Yep. Uh, Fabi, he is the better player, yeah. so he gets to play. Yeah. And my part is uh, this analytical and the ideas and so on, so there I kind of give, give the general direction. Yeah. So sometimes even, you know, like what openings to play uh, would be a bit dependent by by what I somehow analyzed myself or what I learned or sometimes even what I heard from others. Yeah. Like for instance, somebody tells me something, it looks interesting and then uh, two weeks later Fabi ends up playing this. Uh, because uh, okay, playing chess is very difficult, and in such a way, he finds some ease in trusting me with you know my ideas, my directions. Yeah. In such a in this way, Fabi is a very gratifying pupil. Yeah. He he trusts me. Yeah, and, and you can apply a lot of creativity in, in generating new ideas. Yes, I can. I can. I can generate new ideas, and normally he he plays them. Yeah. I mean, I've also had other experiences that you know you, you show somebody ideas and they don't like your ideas because they prefer their own ideas yeah. which is fair enough but then kind of the works the seconds work is a bit uh, futile yeah? it's a bit uh, fruitless it's, it's more limited towards just uh, feeding the computer maybe yeah, yeah. but like this okay I, uh, I i still to this day i think i find a lot of ideas fabi is ready to play them so it's kind of nice and every now and then he does get them yeah and this is very gratifying. Yep. So for the next period, we'll see you continuing as a trainer and helping Fabi, and every now and then on a rare occasion playing yourself. <laughs> well, uh, yes, uh, this is the plan, but uh, of course we have the candidates in front of us now. Yep. And candidates is a really, really, really big thing. Yep. Uh, I mean, my personal opinion, uh, with due respect to all the other tournaments, candidates is the only tournament of the calendar that matters. Yep because it's the one that determines who plays the World Championship match. Yeah. And everything else is um, it's just... No, noise in the background. Not quite noise, but it is a bit of the background, yeah. It is necessary, but it is not decisive. The decisive is really this one thing. Yeah. And that's why, of course, people who, who miss their spot in the candidates, they, um, I mean, they take it hard. Like the top players who win a lot of tournaments, if you don't get to the candidates, it's almost like you know, you missed another two years yep. in following your dream. Yep. Um, and um, and this uh, candidates being of this importance, of course, will determine a lot. Yep. Like qualifying or not qualifying for the World Championship match has major implications for what your year yep. will look like. Yep. So, yeah, if we qualify for the World Championship match, which is, of course, the intention, yep. then uh, there will probably be a lot of work and very little play. Yeah. In the remaining of the of the year, otherwise I don't know. I actually still want to play a bit of chess. Yeah. Um, and um, also, this is the year of the Olympiad. Yeah. Last year, was it no, two years ago? Yeah. Yeah. When I played the Olympiad, I was very rusty. Yeah. And I had a lost position every game, <laughs> every round, every game. I had a lost position. I had to defend white, black, no matter the opponent. I had a lost position. I did not enjoy it very much. Yeah. Uh, although, of course, developed my defensive skills, but uh, I did not enjoy this very much. So I hope this year at least to play one tournament before the Olympiad, yeah. get some training done so that I can, you know, represent my country a bit better. Excellent. Thanks for your time, Rostam. Thank you.